Hi, I'm Gary Deal, President of G&G Fleet Service. Um, if you've seen some of our videos on YouTube, uh, you know that we try our best to provide technical information to those in the field that will do their own work. And in this case, we're going to provide a technical video on teardown of a Wanner H25 pump and installation of the G&G replacement plates. The first step in the rebuild process is to determine the cause of failure. And with this pump, we've already drained the oil. Um, we're now going to inspect the pump and remove the plates um, to try to determine that cause. The first thing I'm going to do is, I'm, it's an easy test, is I'm going to turn the pump using the pulley. It should turn smoothly and freely. This one does not. And if you notice the pulley rocks back, that's an indication that there's a broken spring. So I know that we have a problem at that level. So with that much known, now it's time to open up the pump and do the inspection. For that, we'll have Jose come in and do the disassembly. Assemble the pump, you have to remove the fittings, the inch and a half, and the three quarter fitting, the one inch and three quarter fitting. Okay, let's take a look at the, at the uh, manifold plate. One of the things that we can see right away is that it's worn significantly in the valve pockets. That's where the valves sit uh, under the manifold plate. What happens when, they, when the um, manifold plate wears, uh, the material that, that you're spraying is, is abrasive. Um, the valves become loose in the manifold, in the valve plate, and they move against the manifold plate and they wear, the, that wear it out. And the more it wears, the more the valves are free to move. And the valves will get to a point where the chemical can go around the valve rather than through it. So the first thing that I see here is the manifold plate has worn significantly and there's been significant movement of the valves against this plate. So with that being said, we'll push the manifold plate aside and we'll take off the valve plate. Okay, you'll notice that Jose put two bolts, two of the mounting bolts in, in the top position. This is to hold the valve plate while the two six millimeter screws can be removed. Those six millimeter screws do nothing but hold that valve plate in position when you're reassembling. So he's removing those screws now. The valve plate is very heavy as brass and those two mounting bolts that are in the top will keep it from falling. small six millimeter screws can be removed and set aside. We know that the manifold plate was worn significantly, indicating that the valves had been moving in their seats. If we look at the valves themselves sitting in the valve plate, they're loose. And that is significant where um, that will result in cavitation and ultimately in failure. Okay, as I mentioned that we have a broken spring in this pump. Um, this is an example of a broken spring. You can see that it snapped the end of the spring off. It's now in two pieces instead of one. Um, if run with a broken spring, it, in this case this pump probably kept running for a good bit of time 
it will do fatal damage to the inside uh, of the piston and possibly the piston plate. So, this happens, to, what is the cause of a broken spring? Most often, it's running your pump when it's cavitating or air locked. If you have an air leak on the suction line and you're sucking air into the fluid stream, that will allow the pistons to bounce. And they will bounce and work overwork the springs to the point where the springs will break. This is one that is broken. Okay, one other part of the inspection process is to check the condition of the oil in the hydraulic side. Uh, when you have debris go through the pump, you can puncture a diaphragm, which will allow chemical to go into the oil, turning it a milky color. In the case of this particular pump, we have a broken spring. And what happens when the spring breaks is that instead of the piston collapsing and as it pushes the diaphragm forward, those pieces break inside the piston and the piston becomes solid rather than compressing and it overextends and pushes out and tears the diaphragm and what you get is it tears the diaphragm rather than puncture from the debris. So you can have milky oil from a broken spring as well as you can have it from debris in the, in the uh, chemical hitting the diaphragm and puncturing it. So in this case, uh, it definitely is a broken spring that caused the failure on this pump. Okay, we have uh, seen many, many times that branches will have a pump failure and they'll get a new or a rebuilt pump and they'll take their old pump off and just park it somewhere in the shop without draining it. Why? What makes the, the pump milky, the, the oil milky, is chemical in the oil. That chemical in the oil will act as a corrosive and it will rust and corrode the components in the hydraulic side. This is your oscillating plate. This is basically the heart of the pump. You can see the condition of this one. This is one that was left sitting for quite a while with chemical in the oil without draining it. If you don't drain and flush the hydraulic side, when you know that it's failed and you know that it's milky, this will be the end result. And instead of an easy rebuild, you'll be buying a new pump. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to move ahead to the installation of our G&G &G manifold and valve plates. Um, this is a hydraulic side on a pump that has already been gone through. We know the springs are in good shape. Truthfully, most of the time you'll find that your failures on your pumps are due to diaphragm failures as a result of debris getting to the diaphragms through the fluid stream. The cause of that generally is your banjo screen. This filter is your first line of defense against diaphragm punctures. I can't tell you how many times over the years we've gone to branches to service them because of pump failures and found the screens laying in the back of the truck, taken out, too dirty to clean or the guys were too lazy to clean them. Instead of putting them back in, they just threw them in the back of the truck. Recipe for failure must have a cleaned filter or a screen. A new one is preferred, but a clean one at the minimum. Always check the condition of your banjo filter housing. You want to take a look at the seal. There's a rubber seal that goes around the top that seals the housing, the cover, to the housing itself. If it's not sealed properly, or if you have a buildup of debris inside it and you don't get it out of the way when you put this back on, it will cause an air leak. That air leak will result in air entering the suction line, causing cavitation, causing spring breakage. So, maintain your filters and your screens, maintain your 
filter housing, look at the cap, take a few minutes to clean it out, wipe it out with a rag, make sure there's no debris, put your filter back in, install it, torque it carefully. Look for leaks. It will not leak when it's on suction. When, it's, when the pump is running, it's a negative pressure. It's pulling everything in. It'll pull air in. It's when you shut it off, when you turn the fluid on, you've got your main tank ball valve on, that you'll see it drip. If you see a small drip, drip, drip coming from this housing, then it'll pull air in. So that's an important thing to look for, particularly if you're putting a new pump in.